All right, so today we're talking about bushcraft and wild camping tips for beginners. All right, so tips for beginners for wild camping and bushcraft and all that stuff. So, yeah, uh, firstly, can I just thank JSM Calder for asking me to do this video? Uh, yeah, he sort of tagged me, and I just thought, yeah, I don't usually do tags too much, um, but it just seemed like a really good thing to talk about. So, this is going to be sort of more like bushcraft style wild camping tips. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time hiking up mountains, sleeping in tents, that sort of thing. So this is more sitting around a fire in the woods tips. But yeah, let's get stuck in. So tip number one would be learn your health and safety, your first aid, things like that. Uh, you know, it's very, very easy to get all excited about getting knives and axes and go out to the woods and make a big fire and have a great time drink loads of booze. Um, it's really dangerous too, so you really need to be aware of that. Uh, practice carving in places like your home or you know your back garden. Uh, so if you do end up cutting yourself badly, you've got help readily available. You're not out in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, just get familiar with your tools before you go out to remote places. So I use a Baco Laplander a lot of the time, and it comes with a leather lanyard, which. Oh, it's really nice, it's really pretty. When you first get it, you think, oh, that's brilliant. But unless you use it every time, it's actually quite a dangerous thing. So, yeah, if you've got your hand through the lanyard and you're holding onto the saw, then it's kind of tucked away, and that's that's fine, you know, it stops your hand moving forward or whatever. But the reason I don't use one is because a lot of the time I used to just leave it dangling. Didn't think anything of it until one day I was cutting a branch, and it was a pine branch, and as it snapped off, one of the little sticky outy bits caught on the lanyard that was dangling and basically pulled the saw down through my hand and cut my hand open. So yeah, that's a little tip. If you're going to use the lanyard, then keep it. If you find yourself not using it and it's just dangling, take it off because just now something's going to catch on it and when you're not expecting it, it'll pull the saw through your hand and cut you. There we go. The other thing is watch first aid clips on YouTube, things like that, you know, how to deal with stuff. So if your mate does fling his axe into his leg, you don't just fling a tourniquet on straight away and end up killing his leg for something that you could have just put a compression bandage on. Uh, there's all sorts of tips for dealing with cuts and injuries online. Um, or you could do a first aid course, that would probably be really good too, but in reality you possibly not going to do that, so I would say just watch videos and you can learn a lot from that. Um, yeah, the other things are, you know, carry a first aid kit with you always. Anytime you've got sharp things like knives and axes, always have your first aid kit with you. Um, I do carry a tourniquet in my first aid kit and one of those Israeli bandages. Um, they're just super simple to use uh, if you're in a, a really crazy panic situation like that. You want easy, quick stuff. Uh, the tourniquet is a last resort, like I say. It's something you really want to avoid using at all costs, unless they're pretty much bleeding to death. So, that is, that is my sort of first aid tips. Um, it would have been good to have Colin here, because he's actually a nurse and knows a lot about that stuff. But sadly, because of lockdown and all that, um, I'm out on my own! <laughs> Tip number two is all about fire safety, so yeah, if you're going to be going out making fires, you need to be aware of the ground that you're making the fire on, make sure it's not full of peat, um, or you know, if it's like a, a pine woods like this, it, the, the ground's full of pine duff, and that's really flammable, especially in summertime, you need to be really, really careful, um, make a big 
bed of rocks to make the fire on. Like if you can find a big flat rock, that's what I've done here. There's a big rock about that big and about that thick underneath. That's what I've built my fire on and rocks all around it. So the heat sort of barely gets to the, the ground underneath and uh, it just doesn't doesn't really burn into the, the ground. If you do make a fire without it, um, which I don't recommend, but you, you'll find your fire sinks down into the ground as the night goes on, which is also just a pain in the butt. So yeah, that's my tips for that. Uh, make sure you've got a water supply next to you because to put out a fire, especially like say in pine woods um, or anywhere, yeah, just anywhere, you need like a good four, five, six litres of water to put it out. Um, you know, just pouring a little bit of juice on it, making it go tss, doesn't count as putting a fire out. Um, it could be lit underground. Like I say, at this, this time of year, it's kind of unlikely that you'll start a forest fire because everything's so wet. But in summer, it can be really, really dangerous. Yeah, so that is fire safety. Uh, let's do some fun stuff, actually. How to make a fire because it's actually quite elusive, especially this time of year when everything's wet and frozen and yeah, if you just go and pick up sticks off the ground and try and light them, it just won't work. So you need to find dead standing trees. That's usually the best way. And the way you can tell if a tree's dead is you obviously look up to the top of it if there's still green foliage or pine needles and stuff, just leave it alone. Um, if there's not, if you can't see any any sign of life up there, um, then you look at the bark. Usually, if there's bits peeling off or whatever, that's a good sign. But if you know it could be dead and the bark's still all on it, so what you do is you just cut the bark a little bit, and you can see the layer between the bark and the trunk. That's called the cambium. Uh, that'll be like a really dark color, and that's a sign that the tree is dead. Just check both sides because you want to make sure it's dead all the way around. Um, if it's, you know, sort of light coloured and sappy, then it's still alive. Just leave it alone. Uh, the little cut shouldn't do that much harm to it. It's a lot better than hacking into it with a saw and then realising that it's still alive and doesn't burn. Third tip would be sleeping. Um, yeah, the, the little inflatable mats that you can get, you know, the sort of sleeping mats, you can get like 20 pound ones off eBay and Amazon and things like that and you know it's like giant bubble wrap they come in all sorts of different patterns and they're all very very cool and they say they're brilliant and they show you them lying on rocks and uh, yeah just to let you know that they are unreliable they pop um, don't have that as your sole form of keeping warm in the night um, usually have have a roll mat or something like that underneath it and use it for comfort because they are really comfortable and they do make for a good night's sleep but just to let you know they, they pop um, if you get the Thermarest ones they are a lot more reliable um, but you know again a spark from the fire anything like that will still put a hole in it so I tend to steer clear of them um, I've had a few and just like I say they, they've just popped after about four or five trips um, so I don't trust them anymore a lot of the time I'll sleep in a hammock with a foam, like a thin foam roll mat inside it, and uh, that works for me. Um, you know, I sleep out in weather like this, it's about minus five centigrade today, and yeah, it, it works. So, that is that is my tip for that. Um, obviously, you know, four season sleeping bag at the moment. I'm using a, it's a Microlite 1400 from Mountain Warehouse. Um, they're, they're really affordable and they're really warm and they work good for hammocks because they don't, it's, it's not like down, um, sorry, there's a bird over there, but yeah, it's, they're not like down sleeping bags that puff up to keep you warm. Um, these, these are just like, if they're compressed, they still keep you warm. So when you're in a hammock and everything's all around you, um, you still stay pretty warm in them. I do still sleep with a fleece and usually a hot water bottle with me uh, when it's this cold, but yeah, it'll get you through the night quite quite comfortably. You know, make sure you've got a hat and a pillow as well. <laughs> but yeah, that's my tips for sleeping in the woods. Uh, right, my fourth tip would be to intentionally forget stuff. I know this sounds funny, but once you've been camping a few times and you get settled into what you like and you know, you've got your, your sleeping set up, you've got your cooking set up, 
you know, you try and replicate all the stuff that you need in your house uh, into your backpack. Start taking things out. So maybe one time, forget power cord. Uh, so go out and try and build a shelter without a tarp. And just, you know, obviously within your limits, um, you know, have a plan in your head of what you're going to do and how you're going to overcome these problems. Uh, but yeah, it really progresses your bushcraft skills and forces you outside your comfort zone and makes you adapt and use things that you wouldn't normally use. Uh, it's just a nice creative way of, of learning new stuff. You can get really sort of locked into how you camp and you know, if you like that, that's fine. But if you want to progress your knowledge, then I, I think forgetting things in your pack is, uh, yeah, is one of the easiest and best ways to do it because it just, yeah, it makes you use the stuff around you. Um, so yeah, that would be my, my tip number four. All right, tip number five is to respect the woodland. Leave no trace. Um, this is a little bit different here because this is a permanent camp, so we do leave a shelter. But yeah, always take a bin bag with you. Don't chuck bottles and cans in the fire and leave them all half burned and yucky. Um, don't even leave a fire pit. If it's not somewhere that you're gonna go regular, um, yeah, just, just make sure you leave no trace. It's really uh, nice. It also helps wild campers not get into bother because, you know, especially if you're going up popular places that lots of people go camping, if you leave a mess and everybody leaves a mess, then the park rangers and guys like that are just going to clamp down on it more. They're going to come tell, tell you to move on. So if everybody just tidies up their mess and respects the woodland, doesn't set fire to trees and things like that, um, it just makes it easier for everybody to get out there and have fun. So I would say that it's that is a major tip and things like tidying up your fire. It's very easy to just pour loads of water on it and just scatter the ashes and you know just get it back down to bare dirt and then cover it over with some whatever that's lying about. Um, you know you think your hands will get all dirty and stuff and yeah you know they're not going to be spotless, but ash is actually quite good for your skin and uh, as long as it's you know wet and cold. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's easier than you think to just tidy up all your mess. It only takes like five, ten minutes and uh, really makes a big difference to us wild campers. So yeah, that would be all my tips. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Bye.